Libby Osgood is a professor at the University of Prince Edward Island, an engineer, has worked with NASA, but now she is working toward attaining a new title, sister. Taking a two-year sabbatical from her job at the university to become a nun in training, she believes science and religion can indeed coexist. Joining me now to share her journey is sister Libby Osgood. Good to have you with us this morning, Libby. Oh, thanks so much for having me. What drove you to take this leap and become a nun? Well, you know, for 32 years, it was a secret desire that I didn't even know that I had. And uh, uh, about two years ago, I realized that I was keeping engineering in one box and my, my faith that was really important to me, spirituality and God, in another box. And uh, I, in, while I was in Meat Cove, Nova Scotia, if you can believe it, uh, sitting and looking out in the ocean, I, I had kind of a gong moment from, from God. And, uh, realized that the two could actually coexist together. So um, when I worked with NASA and with at UPEI, I just loved teaching and I loved engineering so much that I never thought that it would be enough to, to stop doing engineering. And I started talking to the sisters from the Congregation of Notre Dame and realized that they practice liberating education, which means that I could be an engineer and a sister and really combine both of my passions into something that was just wonderful. Okay, so you talked about working at NASA. Did you struggle balancing between religious in a field with so many atheists? Well, you know, it's really funny. NASA, it was, working with NASA, it was fantastic because everybody had this common goal and whenever there was a problem, we'd all rally together and work really hard towards achieving the goal. Um, but we were all so focused on the job that we really didn't talk about spirituality and the things that were really important to us. So I found... We didn't talk. You just didn't talk about it. It was kind of taboo. So even though I, I wore crosses and would attend mass on weekends, it never came up. So it was, it was something that I had always kind of felt like I had to hide. So when I started coming out and telling my friends and telling people, I was really nervous at how they would receive it, my former coworkers. But actually, they, everyone's been so wonderful. And what I'm learning is there are so many scientists and engineers and people of both faith and science working hand in hand out there. So, you know, it, it just led me to believe I should have been more honest so much so long ago because I've had the best conversations with people ever since. And you have said you don't really consider the shift from science to spirituality a dramatic one. How come? Oh, no. I mean, you know, when we originally looked at, when people started looking at the stars thousands of years ago, it was to discover why, you know, why were we looking at the stars? Why, what caused that? And science and religion are just two different ways to help explain it. So, you know, I liken it to seeing, you know, pretend you're standing out on the top of a mountain and you're looking out and you just see the most beautiful view and you want to describe that somehow. So you might write a poem or you might take a picture and both of them are good, but they're not the beauty and the majesty of that view. And I feel like science and religion work together and they go hand in hand to try to help show that view and to describe truth and beauty better. Um, so when you have the two combined, you have a much larger data set. You have so much more that you can work with uh, as opposed to the two individually. You're only working with half the data then. Uh, I'm just sort of picturing, uh, you know, you teaching uh, somebody and you've got the science part of your brain and or I guess you're saying, you know, they coexist, obviously this is in you and the spirituality yeah. portion. When you talk about, you know, how the world is created and those, ty those types of theories, I mean, what, what do you say? Uh, well, it doesn't come up in my engineering classes necessarily. In engineering, you know, we're, we're talking equations, we're talking physics, we're talking designing different things. Um, so... But, but, you know, the, the per, first person who proposed the Big Bang Theory was George Lemaitre. He's a Belgian priest. He proposed the Big Bang Theory. So uh, there are so many people that, that see the two coexisting so perfectly. Um, when you think about how old our universe is, 13.7 billion years, you know, it's huge. And it's such a beautiful image to think that a God loves us so much that they would, that, that he would plan our existence to take 13.7 billion years to get to us. That's so much more intricate that I don't see the two as a, a problem. In fact, it, it's more how much God loves us. And then that gives us an opportunity to turn around and show that love to the world and to help each other and to take care of our world that much more. We really appreciate your time this morning, Sister Libby Osgood. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me.